uh, I'm going to demonstrate uh, something I've been experimenting with, uh, the idea of uh, casting sideways. So what I have here is the pouring, uh, the offset pouring basin, uh, and then a tapered sprue going down to a runner and then back up uh, into a, a surge trap. Bar. So this is just the running system and then we'll get the pattern. pattern for the feeder and these will be ready to go and we'll fill not too hard here because the pattern is right there uh, other people demonstrate all this much better than I could We'll use that. As is tradition, I forgot to put holes for draw screws into the patterns. The pattern up first, and the reason for that is because um, here and here, here and here, there is no draft, which normally you don't want, but because of this corner block, I want to kind of minimize machining. I put extra draft on the other side and I thought I'd pull at a bit of an angle, see if I can get away with this. I see. Okay. Keep a little distance. There we go. Da, 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 da. That comes out nice and easy. Um, clean this up a little bit, added some vents. Now we're going to do the, uh, the trick with this guy. We're actually going to take this side off of the flask. And after we do this, the flask is going to be very delicate. So, whoop. okay. Need to come up with a quick version of this at some point, but still definitely in the experimental phase. Now, very carefully set this vertical. The mold in the orientation that's actually going to be poured. So, metal will go get poured in there, flow over the little bump that you're always supposed to put in, down the tapered sprue, through the runner, and then lose velocity, and then slowly build up pressure and begin to fill the pattern and the feeder. All right, now you can see the mold has put together. We clamp the two halves together. There we are. Interesting. Oh. Interesting. Came out. So here's the casting cleaned up. Uh, we can see that, uh, you know, there's the pour offset pouring basin. So metal went in there and then up and around and through the tapered sprue, uh, which 
reduced in, uh, in uh, cross section as it went down. So as the metal speeds up, uh, continues to confine it and keep it under a little bit of pressure to keep the air out. And then we have this bend and it's interesting, we got a lot of flash here, but um, this bend is really um, the whole point of, well, one of the points of uh, having the vertical parting plane. Um, when you have a drag and a cope with the parting plane, you know, level, um, it's hard to make a gentle sweep from the bottom of the sprue to the runner. But if you mold everything in, uh, one side and then, you know, tip it up, then it's easy to mold in this nice streamlined bend. Uh, from the sprue base to the runner and uh, in my previous videos uh, you could see the the little uh, wa molded or the printed water demos that I did uh, you know this is a when this is sharp uh, it's definitely a source of turbulence and uh, definitely a point where you could get air entrainment uh, into the metal before it gets into the um, the actual mold this flash is a pretty serious problem, and it's especially probably a problem here. You can the, the concern is that this junction between the feeder and the pattern may have frozen early and may have cut off the feeder from the from the actual uh, molded part. So there may be a shrink down in here. We're going to cut this open, and we're going to find out. So because of the size of this. Uh, um, junction between the feeder and the pattern you know this is this definitely this has to stay molten and with all this flash around it it may not have okay so i uh cut this away and uh and uh filed and sanded um that joint where the feeder went in you can see right there and uh Definitely has something going on here. Uh, hard to say if that's some shrinkage or if that's just loose sand uh, that got into that little tight corner there. Uh, very All right, here we are. I machined this side. Uh, as you can see, I had some fixturing problems, so I ended up actually taking off more than I meant to, somewhere between a 16th and an eighth. So got way beyond the skin into the core of it and that's actually good because I can see that yeah so that what I thought was an occlusion might be but it goes pretty deep I think definitely some prosty there and you can sort of see it around here and then less here so I gotta wonder if it's shrinkage if it's this core pulling this or if this is this thickest section pulling material in and creating porosity um, could also be you know trapped oxides uh, allowing that to happen uh, reading Dr. Campbell's book that seems to be the cause of everything um, so if anybody has any thoughts on what we're looking at here um, I'd be curious because whatever it is I want to get rid of it so I have Fed it from the bottom and I used what I thought was a big feeder and yet here we are, porosity everywhere. So something else is going on.